everybody, Simon here, Drowning Love, number five, Joe, he's in Bangla Road, he's sat in a beer bar, halfway up, right hand side, he sat in the bar, right at the front, looking onto the road, one of the countertops, got a beer, a few of the girls in the bar have come up to him, but he's not interested, he sat there, people watching, really enjoying it. The road is full of people walking up and down. There's lady boys, there's freelancers. To the right at the opposite end of the beach in Bangalore, Road, you can see some go-go bars. In the alleyways opposite, you see some go-go bars, but not interested. He'd just rather sit there, people watch, contemplate, watch the world go by. A little bit of some thoughts coming into his head. He's really enjoying Phuket, he loves it. He's been to Patea, he's been to Bangkok, and his dad said try Phuket as well. His dad was right, he does love it. It's an island, It's the coast is there, beautiful, beach are beautiful, people lovely. Really enjoying it. He's still yet to go island hopping, and do a bit of the coastline and things, but he's, he's sort of turned his brain off from that. And he's got, what, less than a week left, something like that. He finishes beer, had about three beers. Leaves the bar and thinks, I'm going to go around the beach. Comes around the corner, about halfway along the beach, another bar. This is sort of a, uh, there's a hotel set back and there's a bar in front of it, sort of an oval bar, quite modern. And he grabs a seat there and there's these big fans around with a mist blowing sort of like a vapour over you, keeping you cool. It's still quite warm. He plonks himself on there. There's a bit of activity going around. There's even a guy on the, the next bar along doing juggling with fire and things. It's really happening. There's couples around, honeymooners. There's even people always on the beach having photos done for weddings and things. So the beach is to his left. He's there thinking to himself. Long term plans. He doesn't want to continue piloting around the Caribbean, Americas, all around that side. He occasionally gets jobs coming through the Suez Canal and down to Singapore, um, which in his head reminds him he's about, after this holiday, he's got six weeks back at work. He's then going to have to do a four week uh, reassessment, recertification for the Suez Canal coming up. And he's got to get that if he's going to move on to those Asian jobs as well. He'll need that. But it then means he's then got another six week spell. That's six, 12, 16 weeks he's going to be working now before his next break. That's four months. You know, it comes to the end of February now. He's thinking, I really like Phuket. Maybe I should consider buying a condominium here then maybe towards the end of the year I can start getting the last certifications for this area maybe I can push for one of those jobs and come away from America sell the house this idea sort of it gets the seed growing and he's thinking it's not a bad idea it makes sense he's got plenty of money in the bank no family he could afford a condominium he could pay outright cash um, it's He's thinking this, is, this will be a good idea, this will be a good time to start looking and then after my four month spell I'll come back and I'll seriously try and find one and maybe buy one. I could base myself here then, start doing the certification around the Asian areas and if I can get that job, sell the house, leave that company in America, done. He likes planning, he likes his numbers and schedules. Anyway, a couple of drinks later, brilliant. He starts walking back up the beach. Now, May, Nan and Fa, cracking on with the shop. The tuk-tuk driver, good as his word, came back the next day, put the ceiling tiles in, and they've got some lights in there, bright white lights now. The girls are painting. New fridges there, new microwave, it's all clean in the kitchen area. Toilets fixed, 
She paid that tuk tuk driver 2,000 baht and gave him a little tip. Still got the window to take all that paint off and paint the shop. The floor is all nice tiles now, they got rid of that carpet. It's all cleaning up nice, still a bit more work to do. But they're cracking on. May's plan is get it all decorated, then, and the window done and finished, she can then organize a sign, telephone lines, desks, computers, all the rest of it. That'll be her next step. Anyway, they're there, painting away. Joe, walking along, heading towards that corner where May's shop is. Sort of quite happy mood, he's had four or five beers. He's sort of heading back, he might catch one more beer on that corner and then back to the hotel. Keeps, he's thinking of the condo as he's walking along. He's sort of miles away and he's walking along. Just as he's coming, chemist, then there's the corner, round to the bar and the shops. Just as he's coming in front of the chemist, May walks round the corner, scruffy jeans, white t-shirt, paint all over her. She's popping back to the, her room for something. And he's walking along, fate steps in and brings May right round the corner and they almost collide. They just stop. The thunderbolt strikes. This is that moment in the movies. You've got male as Tom Hanks comes around the bridge with his dog. Is it Meg Ryan, I think it was, looking down. <gasps> I can't remember the dog's name. Whatever. Grimville or something. The Thunderbolt strikes. They're one foot apart, face to face. And May says, Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Please excuse me. Steps to the side. And walks around him. He is stood still. Mouth open. Turns around, takes a look at her walking around the corner, and then a double. And you, you can imagine that two and three looks, and that was the Thai girl, but she just spoke perfect English. She had her hair in a ponytail, paint all over, and he's like, "Oh, wow, oh, okay." Off he goes around the corner. Jumped in the first bar. Was it the Dolphin Bar or whatever it's called? Leo Bar or... It's pretty, pretty busy. Only seat is on the roadside, so goes around, sits there, back to the road. And he's facing her shop. Orders a beer. And then he doesn't... I mean, he's not associated her with that shop or anything, but he's looking at the shop. The lights are on. All these tattoos painted over the front windows. You can't really see in, but the lights are on. It looks bit brighter in there and the doors open and he finds himself just sort of leaning over and can't quite see in the door what's happening there's a couple of people in there already anyway drinking away thinking about the condo still what <sighs> right hotel off he goes That was it, they just had a quick meeting. Back to the hotel. Now, he spends the rest of his holiday with his laptop, wandering around, looking at agents, looking at prices on windows of condos and things. And he kept, in the mornings he'd find himself down at that bar again. He quite liked that bar because the beach is there. With his laptop, tapping away, trying to find prices out. And he's very thorough. He's looking at all the areas around Phuket within about five, ten miles. He's there for the rest of the week in the mornings. And he's sort of half taking notice of that shop. It's keeps seeing a person in there but doesn't know whether it's May or anyone else. Nothing's really happening. On his last day though, he's there in the morning, and there's a girl with his with her back to him, starting to take the tattoo paint off the window. This is a slightly shorter girl, a little bit um, chubbier. And he taps away and he notices it. And no one else in the bar, and he just, for some reason, shouts across, what, What's the shop going to be? 
it's far. She turns around, says, tourist shop, tour shop. He looks at a bit of a tomboy, you can tell straight away. And he thought, hmm, okay, oh, right. That was it. Tapping away. On his last day, he goes and sees a couple of condos through an agent. But prices he's got, roughly knows the prices, what it's going to cost him. This is 15 years ago. Then condo in Phuket in Patong was two, three million baht. It didn't phase him. Even if it had been more, it wouldn't have phased him. But it's within his price range comfortably. His holidays come to an end. It's time for him to pack up, head home, and start the long stint. He's got that Asian job in mind. It's really the condo, the Asian job. You know, he's sort of 45 years old. He's thinking, that's how I want to finish my career for the next 10 years or so. Taking those super tankers through all the hard waters, getting paid a lot more money than he's on for less hours more time off and he'll be closer to if he gets a condo be closer to so pop in and out of home and off joe goes that's it off he goes for the next four months may nan at the shop they're cracking on with it and they finish all the painting they clean all the window everything's done may's next job will be to organize the desks, the computers. She gets on her phone to her contacts, posters, every, all the uh, paperwork stationery she's gonna need, she organizes, she orders computers, desks, everything. Gets it all done over the next few weeks and gets it all delivered. Now one of her contacts says to her that uh, there's an opportunity for her. Um, they've had inquiries from a company in Malaysia uh, a big tour company that they bus people in on coaches different tours all over the place and they are inquiring about Phuket hotels tours and everything and the May's contact has said I've got someone in Phuket who could organize independently to us everything for you and I'll get that person to contact you now what an opportunity. May hasn't even opened the door of the shop yet and her old contacts are coming through. Immediately she knows if she can land something like this, the shop will take off. And although she's still going around all the jet ski operators and the parrot, all the different little tour companies around and the, the boat owners and things, she's arranging all that. She's got all the posters, putting prices together she knows that that's the big, the big apple for her. That's the, the prize tours that would make her some serious money. She has to consider if she goes for something like that, goes for something like that, she will need full-time staff. One, maybe even two. She contacts this Malaysian company, has a chat with them, and everything they want she can fulfill. And they've given her the green light to price everything up for them. That's a lot of work straight away for her. Her first reaction, Nan. She sits down with Nan and Far, takes them for lunch, and tells them that the opportunity is a, has arisen. It could get the shop into full speed ahead um, straight away. So she says, I'm prepared, Nan. I will teach you the business. I will, I will upgrade your clothing. I will teach you everything you need to know. I'll teach you all the computers, the internet, everything we do. I'll give you a full-time job if you want it, if you're gonna stick with me. And Far, would you like to come in as well on a part-time basis? However, you will need to upgrade your clothes. Now, Nan, over the moon, fabulous. Yes, yes, yes. Far, not really interested. She's the tomboy. She's like, not really interested. No, thank you, but no, it's not what she wants to do. No, okay, fair enough, and Nan's fine with that. Probably better if they are a couple, Nan and Far, 
they don't want to be working together as well. That's not brilliant. A week or so later, everything's in place, shops open. They have a little party amongst themselves on the beach, get drunk one evening, but the shop's open. Tourists sort of wake up at 10 in the morning. So that it's going to be 10 in the morning till maybe 6, 7 in the evening. For Nan, but May, there's nothing else to do. She'll stay there every night till midnight, working away details the way she has always done it, every little detail. And she will be there every day till midnight, seven days a week. And everything's going well. She starts planning, talking to this company, everything's looking good. All good, really, really good. That's where we're gonna leave it. I will see you on the next episode, installment. Bye for now.